You're joining on Shit is Broadcast. You're joining on Shit is Broadcast. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Blessings to you, saints. Everyone, blessings to you. Of course, I know everybody. We got busy, but I'm, I'm finding time to shoot a video. everyone doing blessings to you blessings as you're joining on Shedish broadcast prophetic mysteries uncovered completely Saints, I'll be releasing this book in just a little while. We was just doing proofreading on it and I'm adding on some chapters. I want to be a blessing to you. I have a lot of strong wisdom in here. So much wisdom. If you're a man of God, if you're a woman of God, it don't matter what creed of life, this book will take you to another level in the spirit. It's full of wisdom. It's full of secrecy. Is full of understanding. I got a chapter on angelic anointings. I got a chapter on uh, how to defeat sexual thoughts, defeating sexual thoughts. I have a chapter. On wealth, I have the I have a chapter on how to break witchcraft in your life. How to break witchcraft? What's the secret to that? What are the weapons that you use? What are the things that you look for to even know if it's witchcraft? Because you have to discern between people that have a bad moment and people that have bad motives. People that have bad moments can change, but people that have bad motives, you get away from them until they change. <laughs> or if not, just move on. It's mighty. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Prophetic mysteries uncovered completely. As you're joining on, share this broadcast. Invite your followers. Bless you, saints. Everyone, bless you. In Jesus' name. I'm doing an amazing subject here on how to keep your mind in the anointed. I'm doing a deep subject on how to move with your angel. I just be on here briefly, but I just want to say this. Angels are not only sent to protect your body, but they're sent to protect your thoughts. 
angels not only protect your body, but they come to protect your thoughts. As a matter of fact, angels know what location in the earth that can damage your thoughts because even locations carry spirits. Some people, if they go to the club, the spirit of the club. Some people, if they go to hang out at a house, they remember what they did in the house. Some people, they may have furniture, they remember what the furniture represented. Angels not only protect your body, but they also protect your mind because they know what can impart thoughts to your mind. What can bring you back into a thought life. Somebody can call you a name that reminds you of someone that you hated. Somebody can call you a name that reminded you of someone that you love. Someone can call you a name that you remember someone that has died used to call you. Angels know how to position you into a place where you'll be in a location where God can speak to you the most. Angels know how to orchestrate events in the spirit so that you'll be in a place where Jesus' voice will not be overspoken by other voices. Now there's a place in the spirit There's a place in the spirit that you must aim at daily and constantly. Your mind, if you, if you don't have a mind frame, your mind will play mind games. And a lot of times your mind will play mind games on you because it's not focused on anything that God wanted to be focused on. And sometimes you can be doing nothing and demons can be doing everything. An idle mind is a demonic mind. And nothingness in your thoughts is demonicness in your thoughts. <laughs> the same way demons know what can corrupt your mind, angels know what can product your mind. The same way demons know what can destroy your mind, angels know what can employ your mind. Give your mind an assignment. If you start your day, think about 20 things that Jesus has done for you. Oxygen in your body, the ability to hear, the fact that you're listening to this, you can hear. The ability to see, the fact that you're watching this, you can watch. The ability to have hands, the ability to have a job the ability to even look for a job is even a blessing the ability to even know that you need a job is a blessing look for things to be thankful about because thankfulness is the guardian of your thoughts Thankfulness is the guardian of your thoughts and praise raises, praise will raise the anointing in your mind. Praise will raise the anointing in your mind. Praise will raise the anointing in your mind. Now, this is what you want to also catch. Keeping the anointing of your mind. Decrees. Declaring the word. Or decreeing things that empower you from the word. This is something you want to catch. Decreeing the word. Decreeing things that keep you empowered from the word. Decreeing the word is something that keeps your mind anointed. Oh, I got good lighting right now. This is the best place I could ever be. 
Tiff, did you pray this? <laughs> did you pray this because I got good light in there? Uh, I thought it was going to look like Wesley Snipes. Driving underneath them bridges and whatnot. Somebody say, are you in Yuba? No, I'm not in I'm not in Yuba because if I was in Yuba, I would have got out by now. <laughs> I don't trust Yuba. Praise raise the anointing in your mind. And whenever you're in a place where God is going to tell you something, he needs your focus. Now, this, this is what I want you to catch with your angels. Angels know where you need to be for God to speak to you effectively. They know how to move people out of your life because sometimes people have destroyed the volume of God's voice. Sometimes people have destroyed your sensitivity to the Holy Spirit because people can get you so acquainted with common sense and natural knowledge that supernat supernatural knowledge is something that it takes you a long time to comprehend. You don't want to be around anyone that, that corrupts your receptivity. There are people that you can permit in your life that corrupt your receptivity. You can become a, you can get around a suspicious person and become suspicious off of their spirit of suspicion. Because suspicious people never receive a prophet because everybody is a false. So what happens when you see the real? Oh, you're a false prophet too. So what happened when you see the real? Oh, that's a false prophet too. Oh, suspicious people never receive blessings because how God wraps up the blessing, he knows that they're not going to pass the test to unwrap it. Oh, saints, have you ever thought about it? That God wraps up your blessing and then he makes sure that it is a test to see if you can unwrap it. Angels know what Jesus likes. They are the heavenly hosts. When someone hosts you, they find out your preference. They find out your desires. They find out, do you want your water hot or cold? Do you want the room temperature hot or warm? Uh, warm or cold? What's your preference? They were the heavenly hosts. So they know how to get the heavenly atmosphere translated to the earth in your life. Angels know this. And when you operate in humility, you can navigate with your angel. You cannot be someone that thinks that you know everything. Because there are angels that carry such a knowledge to bring you to the place that the Holy Spirit wants you to be. But you have to be humble. Humble means that you're teachable. Humble means that you're reachable. Availability. You have to be available. You cannot be someone that's always occupied. That God can never get you when he wants you. Because if you come 10 minutes later after a divine instruction, God probably switched. God needs people that's always ready. You can't be someone that's trying to prepare for God. You have to be someone that's with God and prepared. You don't prepare to preach. You preach prepared. You don't prepare to minister. You minister prepared. You don't prepare to heal the sick. You heal the sick because you're prepared. Preparation is so important. If you're going to keep your mind, prepare an atmosphere where your mind won't be damaged. Don't reacquaint your, yourself with things that will damage you. Don't reacquaint yourself with things that will weaken you. If you know something is deadly, 
Don't focus on it heavily. If you know something is deadly, don't focus on it heavily. Your mind may go there, but casting down imaginations and high things that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Whatever doesn't grow you, slows you. Whatever doesn't grow you, slow you. So if it's not growing you, it's slowing you. If what you're thinking is not going to get you to your promised land, it's been sent to get you from your promised land. If you take a note, write that down. If what you are thinking is not going to get you to your promised land, it's going to get you from your promised land. You don't need any thoughts in your mind that's not going to link you to a greater anointing. As a matter of fact, meditation is revelation of the word that brings a demonstration of the word. Meditation is a revelation of the word that brings a demonstration of the word. You don't need any thought that God has not brought. And if you don't bring your mind into captivity, your mind will bring you into captivity. If you don't control your mind, your mind will control you. Whenever you're depleted, it's because there's thoughts in your mind that are illegal, that's not defeated. Whenever you are depleted, there are demonic thoughts that, you, that are not defeated. They're in your mind still. They're still operating. So what happens is, if your mind has a demonic operation, your, de your decisions cannot have a divine operation. Think about that. If your mind does not have, if your mind has demonic uh, occupation rather, let me just say it like that. Your decisions cannot have divine demonstration. If your mind, now you have to be careful of spider demons because spider demons will create webs in your mind. Now, I want you to see this. If someone has a page, we call it a website. Oh, saints. Website. We call it a website. If someone has a page, we call it a website. This is what you want to catch. There's a web. So it, it is to draw you in. It's to get your attention. It's, it's to get you into a place where mentally you're giving all of your focus into something. It's a web. Be, before we sound out the full word, word, it's a website. What begins to happen? The devil knows how to send pictures in your mind to get you into a web. And you start viewing and browsing all type of things. You start viewing and browsing all type of information that God doesn't want in your system. The spider demon. And spiders do something very uh, distinctive that I want you to catch. A spider will aim at flies. Now I want you to catch this. The Bible say dead flies in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. I believe dead flies causes the anointing to give off a stinking savor. What begins to happen when we deal with dead flies? Dead flies represent demons that come to corrupt the anointing on your life. To mess up your impartation from God. If you are someone that receives an impartation from a man of God, you have to defeat the spider demon and the fly demon. Because the spider demon is a demon that pits you in a web, a web of confusion. 
it puts you in a web of of doubt. Some people experience God and then say, did I really experience God? Why are you doing that? You're in a web. Because you had a revelation that you experienced God, but somebody came and spoke to you or somebody said something to you. Now, you're in a web of confusion. A fly demon is connected to impartation. Because when you deal with impartation, you're dealing with God giving you something that is food for your soul. If you ever studied food, food, when food is presented, flies come because they want the food. Think about it, saints. Oh, saints, this is so powerful. As you're joining on, let someone else hear the gospel. Let someone, come on, everybody, share, share, share. I want you to share this. Oh, the power of Jesus Christ. Oh, share this. We at 1,000. Come on, saints, let's share this. Let the gospel get out. Let's get to 2,000. Let's, let's get the gospel out. Let's get the gospel out. People need to hear this word. There's so much foolishness that goes on in a day. No substance. Let someone hear what thus saith the Lord, what the prophet of God is saying. Oh, this is so powerful. The fly demon is, con is assigned to impartation. So when you receive an impartation, your impartation represents food. Your impartation represents food. So what begins to happen? Demons are attracted to food. Now, this is what I want you to catch about flies. Flies don't want warm food. Flies love to get food that's cold. So here's the secret. If you get defeated by a fly demon, it's because you didn't stay on fire about your impartation. You did not stay on fire about the anointing that God gave to you. Because if you did, the fly demon would not have been able to corrupt it. Because flies only like to get on food that is cold. So saints, here's the secret. Keep your impartation on fire. Keeping your mind anointed. Oh, saints, how to keep your mind anointed. 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 Number, no, I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. To value every impartation and investment that God makes in you. Value every impartation and investment that God makes in you. Don't take it for granted. Because your impartation, when it gets cold, demons, they love those fly demons. They are attracted to cold food. Not just any food. The food has to be cold. It has, the warmth of the food has to leave. Because demons, fly demons, when you're not on fire about your impartation, when you're not on fire about what God has invested in you. When you're not on fire. About what God is imparting to you. The fly demon. Dead flies. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 I believe. Dead flies. It causes the anointing to give off a stinking savor. This is why I want you to catch saints. For you to keep your mind. Don't let your curiosity birth. Wrong impartation. Because curiosity can make me become so vicious for knowledge. That I can search for it from a tree that God told me not to eat from. Oh, this is so powerful. Oh, this is so powerful. As you're joining on, please share this broadcast. Please invite your followers and say, Lord, I received the prophet's reward. 
This is so powerful. Don't let curiosity birth. Don't let curiosity birth a wrong decision. Don't let curiosity birth a wrong appetite. And don't let curiosity birth wrong impartation. Because when you become curious, you want to be fed something. You want to know something. You want some type of knowledge to come. What begins to happen? You can receive it from the wrong tree. Some people want to know about people so much that you go ask someone that hates the person and they give you wrong information. You can be so curious about something that you go ask a woman's enemies and they have so many bad things to say to you about her because they are her enemies. Now you just received the wrong impartation. Now you're in hatred towards someone because of a wrong impartation. Now you despise someone. Don't let your curiosity birth wrong impartation, wrong decisions. Because curiosity can corrupt you if you don't have wisdom. Curiosity can create anxiety in you, make you so anxious that you start operating in self. Curiosity is so dangerous because it'll move you into a place where you no longer move in the spirit or discernment. You can step into illegal territory. You keep your mind anointed because you know how to manage curiosity and you know how to bring it under subjection. You take a note, write that down. You know how to manage curiosity 